Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of the Champions League final. I had everything actually ready already this morning. I just didn't know who is the referee and I just saw the re who the referee is so I can do that and you will see that in a second. Um, as with the Europa League final I will of course wear both dress. First I will wear my favorite PSG jersey. I think you cannot improve on this one. Um, for that one uh, and maybe later I don't know in this final I have actually a favorite uh, I will definitely be on the Parisian side on that although uh, as you will see I think if Bayern Munich wins that one this might be one of the most deserved Champions League wins uh, ever um, to consider because uh, I think I've ne we have rarely seen a team steamroll the opposition as Bayern Munich has been doing it this year. Um, I will not talk about, and this is just as a heads up, um, you will only hear now the uh, words Highline, because in all the previous videos it's all Highline, blah blah blah. I will more go by the numbers and tell you what the numbers are and certain characteristics of the teams to look forward to. So yeah, let's get started, I would say. So here it is, the big final, uh, PSG against Bayern, played in Lisbon as the Estadio de Luz, uh, as have been quite a few games uh, before, because the whole tournament took uh, place in uh, Lisbon, of course. It will play on August 23rd, it's Sunday at 9 o'clock in the evening, and the referee is Daniele Orsato. I have to say, probably the best Italian referee, and I'm not surprised that we have an Italian referee in this final, because... Um, Say what you want about Serie A and Italy. I think the best referees, they have their flaws, but the best re referees overall are coming all out of Serie A. So let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, the road to Lisbon. Well, the road to Lisbon, they may Lisbon, the final in Lisbon. Uh, very interestingly, they had both relatively easy parts with the occasional big team in there, but they played the two Spanish giants and in a way steamrolled both of them. Yes, PSG, the first game Real Madrid against uh, PSG. This was the first game of, of the season. Remember the one where they played in the white versus the uh, Navy, Real Madrid and Navy, which was completely surprising. Easy 3-0. This was probably the most impressive uh, performance in the entire Champions League. In Madrid, they got a lucky 2-2 two -two draw, it has to be said. Galatasaray, um, relatively easy wins there, uh, same with Club Bruges. Uh, notice both 1-0 and 5-0 and uh, with reverse uh, signs. Against Dortmund away from home, they were uh, outclassed, but Neymar showed how well all the dangerous players and then the reverse fixture, they actually had some easy time um, disposing of Dortmund. Atalanta, a last minute comeback uh, to turn right around. Uh, Atalanta just got this was kind of the big game that everyone was looking for. Atalanta ran out of steam and PSG over the whole game was actually a better team and they totally dominated Leipzig. This was not even, this was a, an easy win for them. Everything that Bayern did was easy. PSG we saw had one draw, one loss, everything else winning. Bayern has only won. Uh, Red Star, Belgrade, Javena, Svesda, 9-0 overall. Spurs, this was probably the first statement, 7-2. In London, absolute damn demolition, four goals by Gnabry. The three one at home, this was basically when it uh, didn't count much from it. They probably the most difficult of their wins was against Olympiacos um, with 3-2 and then 2-0 at home against Olympiacos was easy. Uh, Chelsea away steamrolled them. The reverse fixture was just a formality, which they also uh, took care of with 4-1. I don't need to uh, say much more about uh, what they did to Barcelona and also Lyon uh, was a shake at the beginning at the end, a comfortable 3-0 win. The head-to-head -head between those two, and this time we have a head-to-head, head -head is kind of interesting because PSG has five wins and Bayern has three. They met in the 94-95 uh, group stage, so it was all played in 94, where PSG twice won against Bayern and um, very convincingly, and there was a wonderful goal by uh, Wea in there as well that you might want to look up. And then they only met in the group stage again three times and always splitting it in Paris, uh, Paris Saint Germain won, and in Munich, uh, Bayern München won. So, um, and sometimes quite lopsided results. The last time they met was in 2017 18 group stage, where um, the most recent one, it was the second game, Timothy Wea 
son of uh, Georges Weah, uh, gave uh, PSG an early lead, but Bayern couldn't turn it around. The game, there was not much riding, and I think PSG had already won, won the group. And in the first fixture, this was the one that got Angelotti sacked, where they completely rolled over Bayern. Alves and Cavani and the Neymar scoring the goals. And if you look at the head, head to head, there have been many, many lopsided results. Uh, Five months and all, well, so in going both ways. So, um, as we see, goals it's 12 11. So, whenever those meet, uh, there can be goals in there, and that's also what, what makes this tie very, very intriguing. Uh, when we look at honors, yeah, I mean, Bayern has a lot more titles, and for PSG, I needed to actually cheat a little bit to get them at least cup titles, even. Um, but first, league titles, PSG has won nine leagues, but uh seven of which came after the Qatari take takeover, uh, 13 to 16, four, then Monaco actually won one, and then they, now they are three in a row, although the last one probably is contested by French fans. When you look at Bayern, it's also uh, interest, interesting to see as the years or the decades go on, how denser the titles for Bayern became. Uh, they were a force in the 70s, but they only won um, uh, three titles in the 70s itself, so, yeah, I'm not counting 79, 80. Now, then in the 80s, they won a couple, a couple of titles. In the 90s, they became regulars. In the 2000s, actually, a rather bad decade, decade uh, in, in a way for Bayern. But it's when the 2010s, when they really, uh, Dortmund got two, and then it's all Bayern, 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 Bayern. We have eight years in, in a row. So you see how Bayern got more dominant. Cup titles, it's a little bit more even. Bayern has 20 cup, cup titles, which is uh, most in Germany. And uh, PSG holds... Uh, Coupe de France uh, titles, I think, are 13, which is a record, and Coupe de la Ligue titles are 9, which is also a record. And most of them, of course, also coming in the 2010s. So there is a parallel there that they became both real for. I mean, Bayern was always a force, but PSG was not a force in France. They only are in this decade. And European titles, yes, Bayern also has the higher pay pedigree there with having six titles overall. They have won the European Cup that kind of cemented the legacy three times in a row from, you know, 74, 75, 76. Uh, they won the Champions League already twice, uh, 2000, 2001, and then in 2012 and uh, 2013. As we'll see, they have also lost a lot of finals. They won the Cup Winners Cup. This was their first title, 66, 67, and the UEFA Cup in 95, 96. Franz Beckenbauer fam famously calling it the Losers' Comp competition. Um, in the same year as Bayern won the UEFA Cup, Paris Saint-Germain won the Cup Winners' Cup. Uh, that was their one trophy with a 1-0 win over uh, Rapid Vienna. They reached the final the next year as well, uh, where they lost the 1-0 to um, the Barcelona of the original Ronaldo. So they had a pretty good run, and the year before they were in the semifinals of the Champions League, as was Bayern. But PSG, PSG was clearly the better team in that season. So in the 90s, mid 90s, they had a really strong period. Um, then they fell away a little bit. They won a lot of cup, cup, cup and now they're a force again. Um, let's look at the form curves, which is very difficult for PSG because uh, Liga didn't pick up again and we have mostly friendlies and so on. And you can see actually the form curve. Uh, it starts early July and this is mostly friendly and then takes a dip and this is mainly due to uh, the Coupe de la Ligue uh, final where they only managed a nil-nil against Lyon which kind of uh, down of the form. Uh, also the Coupe de France final where they only won one nil against Sens at the end was not kind of this high point uh, because um, the odds were that they score a lot more goals. But in the friendless, they were con convincing and they're slowly picking up steam now, at least from a statistical uh, point, point, point of view. And their current form is at 82%. Let's calculate average 75%. But this is the one form calculation where I really have a hard time taking it seriously because uh, PSG has played so little games since it will be more interesting over the league uh, season if there was more played. Bayern, on the other hand, I mean, this is a form curve. I have not seen anything like it before. Always over 88% 80, 80, 80 and getting better the longer the season went on. You can see a little bit the break where um, they had a friendly against Marseille, which kind of dropped a little bit there, standing barely. Uh, and now they're at full 100%. Steamrolling ever since they beat Barcelona, I think uh, that counts for a lot. Average form, 91%. Bayern is in really, 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 really good form. It has to be said 
like that. Um, some game notes. Let's start it with PSG. They are a 12th game unbeaten run, uh, only competitive games with 11 wins. The only draw was in the Coupe de la Ligue final against Lyon. So uh, pretty good form, I have to say. And they are scoring early. In six of the last eight games, the first uh, goal came within third, third, third minutes. They are a free scoring side, very offensively. And if you look at the lineup, I mean, this is where their strengths clearly are. They've reached the first Champions League final, but it's the most games that, of any team that played in the comp competition to reach the final. Yes, it's a little bit unfair to say it that way because nowadays, the, you know, since the Champions League was instituted, there are way more games than we had before, but it's 110 games before reaching a final. This is a record. So I think a nice tidbit. And they're the fifth Ligue 1, not French team, Ligue 1 team, uh, counting Monaco, which is technically not French, to reach the final in Europe's top comp competition. But there's only one Ligue 1 team, must say, that won um, a final in the European Cup and Champions League final. We had twice in the 50s, Stade de Reims, uh, losing to Real Madrid. We had Saint-Étienne losing to Bayern. Uh, we had then uh, Marseille losing on penalties to... Uh, Gervena Zvezda, two years later they beat Milan. And then of course we had Monaco losing to um, Porto. Bayern, I told it they're in great form. 29 un game unbeaten run with only one draw against Leipzig, nil-nil at home. A game they largely dominated, but Leipzig probably had good chances to uh, beat them. This was the closest they came to defeat. Absolutely, and this year they have not even given up. Um, they have not been beaten at all. Uh, unbelievable. What's even more unbelievable, the free scoring. 3.34 goals per game overall since the restart. And in the Champions League over the whole entire competition, they score more than four goals. Unbelievable. Unbelievable numbers. It's also the first team since the Milan of 92-9-93 that won all games prior to reaching the final. The caveat, of course, is that this Milan team uh, was heavily favored against Marseille, and this is still one of this still stings me uh, a lot. Um, it's a French team that got the big team, and I'm also a little bit reminded of the perfect New England Pay Patriots uh, that won 18 games and then lost in the Super Bowl to the New York Giants. So I think this is the one thing where I have to say. Uh, we have seen it before, and then in the final they fall short. But at the moment, I think Bayern Munich has to, by all um, intents and purposes, considered to be the favorite. And they also uh, reached the 11th final. They have only a 5-5 record, which is not all of the great. And remember, they have a penchant for losing rather dramatically finals. And very often, uh, before they get a big win, take the first three out, when they usually lose in kind of embarrassing uh, fashion, Manchester United comes to mind, Chelsea at home come, comes to mind, but there's also this embarrassing 1-2 final loss to Porto, which came out of nowhere. That side then never picked it up to actually go for a title, although in 91 they probably should have reached the final. Uh, 11th final, Madrid has of course reached more, having one third thing, but uh, Milan also had 11th final, so uh, they are tied. Milan, of course, at the moment still has a better record. They are, I think they have a 7-3 record. Uh, seven, um, 7-4 record in finals. Okay, project the kids. Oh, this, I'm liking it more and more. I think PSG will play in the jersey, 1920 home jersey. Um, I would not mind if they played in the white jersey uh, that I bought recently, but I think everything points that they play in the navy jersey. Part of me would like them to play in their classic uh, kit, uh, you know, classic style kit that they will have for the upcoming season. but. I think the players actually like playing in this one, so I would assume they will play in that one. If PSG plays in blue, uh, all the options are open for Bayern. Uh, they could choose uh, the red, they could choose uh, the white. I think they will play in their red jersey. Uh, a jersey that actually looks really, really nice. I have not really reviewed and given my, com uh, my, my, my comments, although we have seen it now for quite a while, since uh, June, I think. It's a really nice Bayern jersey. I have, I have to say there's some nice effects in there. Two really nice church jerseys. I also want to say we know that PSG is uh, bankrolled by Qatar. Bayern has a sleeve sponsor, Qatar Airways. So 
there you go. But uh, this is, I think they will play blue against the red, which will make for a really nice final, unless UEFA has some sort of trouble with the red center stripe of PSG against the red of Bayern, but I really hope they do not. Okay, who will win? If I look at 538, I mean, you saw the numbers. It's pretty clear, Bayern are clear favorites, 64% to 36%. I mean, it, I think it's a little bit closer with the bookies at the moment, uh, but at least 538. Bayern is on such an imperious form that PSG cannot come up with it. I think for the book is a little bit more, um, you know, 55, 4, 4, 4, 45 at the moment. Some Somewhere there, around there. But Bayern are the favorites. And what's also remarkable is that in the free scoring form that they are, the bookmakers have a balanced line of 0.5. So this slight favor to uh, Bayern. So Bayern will uh, win with half a goal on average if they will play over and over over, over again, roughly speaking. Um, but the over under is 3.5. So they say there's a 50% chance that we get more than three goals, which is kind of amazing for a Champions League final. We all know that given how Bayern uh, play and how PSG play, um, and how they would match, match, match against each other, especially if PSG takes the lead, I think there could be many goals in that, but that, 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 that could become a slugfest. Um, I honestly have an inkling, I'm not going to make a bridge, but the one thing I say, either it will be a very clear Bayern win, uh, you know, like 4-2, 5-2 or something like, 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 like that. Bayern gives up two goals against big opposition, so that's why I'm saying that. But I think it can either be a very clear Bayern win, or PSG wins it like 2-1-3-2 uh, or something, something like that. So either close PSG win or very clear. I don't see a close Bayern win. That's at least my gut feeling. So there you have it. I'm wearing Bayern now. So let me know what you think about this final. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Drop a comment below what you think is going to happen in that final. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.